Florida will kick off to Oklahoma State as this third period begins, and the shadows have fallen on Florida Field in the late afternoon. Mike Clark fields the ball from the five-yard line. Clark out to the 20. There's a flag down as Clark is tripped up at the 27-yard line. A clipping uh, violation. Ed Robinson made the tackle for the Florida Gators. But this one is going to be marked back. Speaking of marks, there's Mark Murray back on the field. Glad to see him back in action. You know, he was shaken up a bit uh, in the second quarter there, but he seems to be ready to go. Not what Oklahoma State wanted to do, David. Get backed up immediately, being down 26-7 to and deep in their own territory as we look at Steve Spurrier. And now that Gator defense called to the task. And the last time Oklahoma State was backed up on that end of the field, they wound up surrendering a safety. That crowd back there can make a lot of noise. Quarterback Chris Smith has Parker in motion. A handoff to the tailback, Hudson. Hudson is chased down. We got away from Tim Pauk and races out of bounds at the 20-yard line. There you saw the quick feet and the speed of Gerald Hudson and the adjustment that they make on the run right there on the uh, trapping effort. If they can knock the outside defender out, then he'll cut up. If, they, if he's creating a barrier there, then they log him in. They hook him to the inside, and the running back's allowed to bounce outside. And Gerald Hudson bounced outside on that play effectively, picking up a nice first down. More breathing room. Hudson carried the ball only eight times in the first half. Wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, him handle the football a little bit more here in the second half. There you see what Chris Smith did in the first half of the game. And here's Smith's first pass of the second half. Over the middle, and it's Hudson, the receiver with the football at the 23-yard line. And he is tackled by Pauk and Odom. The two inside linebackers converge. And that brings up second down and seventh. Chris Smith right there just trying to throw underneath the linebackers. Take what the Gator defense will give him. Didn't give him much, did they? What, about three yards on that one? The Cowboys had just 46 yards passing in the first half. And only 74 yards in total offense. Smith rolling. Odom chasing. The ball is batted by Spencer and almost caught by Park, but he was out of bounds, even if he had held on to the ball. Jimmy Spencer, though, tipped that ball away from Chris Smith. Odom was in pursuit from the backside. Once Gerald Odom saw Chris Smith start that sprint out action, he says, I got to get over there in a hurry and put pressure on him, and he's going to turn the corner. So it was Gerald Odom's effort that forced Smith ultimately to try and dump the ball away. The Gators almost came up with a... Uh, Almost came up with the uh, interception. Now it's third down and seven. Early in the third period. Smith has two receivers to his left. He's got protection. The ball is caught by Ronnie Fisher. And it will be a first down for Oklahoma State at the 31-yard line. They got just enough yards to keep the drive going. Well, they're going to have to throw the ball a lot in the second half to get back into this game. Not something that they want to do. They would rather feature the run and pass on occasion, but they're going to have to pass more than occasionally in this second quarter if they're going to make up this 26-7 deficit that they face right now. But... Smith looks like a very consistent quarterback. Looks like he can get the job done if they can protect him, if the wide receivers can, in fact, get open. Timeout is called by the quarterback. Didn't like what he saw as he stepped up underneath center Pete Surrett. So Oklahoma State stops the clock early in the third period. 13-23 left in the third stanza, and Chris Smith walking over to the sideline to talk with his coaching staff. The Gators in control of this game, 26 to seven. And really on only one Oklahoma State possession did uh, the Cowboys make any progress in the first half against the Gator defense. A tremendous crowd 
a new Florida field record, 75,428. And 3,000 of those, we understand, were walk-ups this morning. That is a tremendous walk-up gate on the day of a game. You know, most people will make plans far in advance for a college football game, and especially at the University of Florida, that is a rarity to have that many people buy a ticket the morning of a game. But a credit to the excitement that Steve Spurrier and his staff have generated around Florida football. Yeah, you put on a good show and you're... The possibility of standing room only increases considerably, doesn't it? I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of that this season. There's a fumbled snap, but Smith fell on it, I think, back at the 28-yard line. I would suspect that if folks are considering uh, a ticket to a Gator football game later this season, you might go ahead and jump on and uh, grab, though. They might not be around too long. You see the fumble, and Smith getting back on top of it. It'll be second down and 12 has never got the exchange from center. Oh, they messed up again. That is not an instant replay. I think they're trained to go on uh, sound, and on that occasion, possibly the first sound, or at least the center thought it was the first sound. And uh, Smith's not ready. The quarterback's not ready at all to, to get the ball. That's... Pete Surrett, number 61, just having a communication problem with his quarterback, Chris Smith. Twice in one series, that's very unusual to see as we take, it, take a look at Steve Spurrier, who's thinking uh, a few series ahead. Probably figuring about where his team's going to get the football in just a moment, what play he'll run on first down. But first, they got to catch this guy, and Hudson has a first down, and Lots more out near the 50-yard line. That play caught the Gator defense by surprise. Richard Fain had to finally pull the swift senior running back down near midfield. That's a nice move as he dances outside, escapes the tackles of the inside linebackers. Now he's going to break Fee Bartley's tackle. He continues to run until Spencer finally knocks him down. But a big first down. That was a long first down effort right there. Hudson's put up some good numbers this afternoon, averaging 7.4 yards per carry. Had 39 yards rushing in the first half. Again, the young man rushed for close to 1,000 yards last year and missed three ball games. So he's got the ability and they've got the offense to move it. But here they're going to go backwards. Oklahoma State, a program that in the last 10 years has produced some pretty good running backs. Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders. Terry Miller played with uh, right. Buffalo. Wide receiver by the name of Hart Lee Dykes. Not he was a bad football player. He was a number one pick the same year Barry Sanders was a number one pick. Two number ones out of the same senior class. Pitch to the tailback. Hudson ran into his blocker and is knocked down at the 41-yard line by Godfrey Miles. Cecil Got Wilson was trying to clear some room for him, but... Brad Culpepper just pushed Wilson right into the running back. They teach defensive linemen, get leverage, get leverage. Right here, Godfrey Miles has more leverage and more strength than the blocking fullback, and he just stuffs the play until his teammates can shake their blocks. Brad Culpepper, number 50, getting over to help, help out the excellent uh, defensive tackle. There's Godfrey Miles, probably one of the most talented athletes on the team. And look at the size of those biceps. My goodness. Oklahoma State moving the wrong way. It's second down and 19. Smith standing in the pocket. Nice move by Parker to spin away from Fee Bartley. And then Parker is inside the 50 to the 49 of Florida. Another quality football player on this Oklahoma State team. He caught, has caught 33 passes in his career coming into this game. This senior out of Mission Viejo, California, Brent Parker. He's a kid with a great speed and excellent student as well. Speaking about students, I think this Chris Smith has a 3.8 in engineering, the quarterback. So, you know, he's a brilliant young man. He's third and nine from the Gator 49. And overthrew his receiver, Mayfield. 
which probably would not have gotten him the first down anyway with Tim Park standing right there. That will bring up a fourth down punting situation for Oklahoma State. And the all big eight kicker, Kerry Blanchard, called on to punt the ball away to the Gators, Terrence Barber. But what they did with that drive, as we see Blanchard preparing to punt, was get some breathing room, at least force that Gator offense to go a long, long way if they can get the punt back. Jimmy Spencer almost blocked it. And Barber has fumbled it, but I think he got it 21-22. It almost bounced out of his chest right there. Hit his chest before it hit his hands. He wants to catch it in his hands, but it hits the top of his shoulder pads. And then he muffs it. But fortunately, no turnover. Ball is at the 21-yard line. And we'll be back from Florida Field in a few moments. Florida's Shane Matthews has his team set at the 21. He hands off to McClendon, who is hit behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down for a loss of a couple of yards. Satterwhite and Ansley, Reuben Oliver, number 55, also there to make the stop for Oklahoma State. That's got to be one of the first drives in this ball game that was started by the Gators with a run, <laughs> wasn't it? Came out throwing in the first series of the first period, that is for sure, threw three consecutive passes upfield. Moved the ball about 50 yards on those three plays. From the 19, Matthews will throw this time and darts it out to McClendon. Away from one, away from two, ball pops loose. Oklahoma State's got it at the 38-yard line. The Cowboys pounce on it after McClendon turns it loose. And it was Fred Gaines falling on the football. Just great protection again by the offensive line. And McClendon just tries to do too much right here. He's going to make his second shake and bake move there and on the second one he forgets to hold on to the football and I think his hip as he was making his fake actually knocked the ball out of his own hand and uh, big turnover right here Oklahoma State inside the Gator 40 yard line if there is a weakness that McClendon has had it has been holding on to the football that's the first time he's coughed it up and it has been recovered today although he did almost fumble almost lose it near the goal line there's Hudson and there's Fee Bartley and company on the tackle. Dexter Smith was there first, the big sophomore, number 66, out of Wichita, Kansas. How'd Dexter get here, I wonder, from Wichita? That's a recruiting job, isn't it? You know, Gary Darnell had some ties to the Big Eight. And I think that uh, the connection was Gary Darnell that helped bring Mr. Smith to the Sunshine State. Second down and 11 from the 39-yard line. Smith throws into double coverage. The pass is incomplete. Both Miles and Bartley were there. And they had Fisher covered up. Gators doing some substituting on defense, trying to get some fresh bodies out there. And Carlton Miles, who's alternating with Tim Polk, in the thick of the action right there. Bartley out of Jacksonville. One of many outstanding high school football prospects that have come out of the Jacksonville high school system. Third down and 10. Murray and Richardson put on the pressure. Mayfield made a nice play to come back to the football and make the pass easier for Chris Smith, but it's not going to be enough for the first down. He's tackled by Carlton Miles at about the 35-yard line. There's an experienced receiver right here, Mayfield. He saw his quarterback in trouble, and he came to the rescue. And he was in trouble because of pressure from first Mark Murray, then secondly Huey Richardson. But even after the turnover, Oklahoma State not able to get some momentum, get a first down. Now they're forced to try a field goal, and doesn't look like they have enough men on the field, so they're going to call a timeout. Now, Fee Bartley thought he was not going to get off the field in time. He high-jumped just about into the uh, Gator 
bench area back behind where the players stand on the near sideline, but it turned out that Oklahoma State was even more confused than Florida, so the, the Cowboys have to call a timeout. This Blanchard uh, is one of the top kickers in the Big 8, too, isn't he, David? I think he's coming into this ballgame with maybe seven or eight in a row. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very consistent, very accurate kicker. Let's go down on the sideline to Steve Babbitt. Thanks, David. One thing that I've noticed from the sidelines is the overall team speed defensively by the Gators from the front line all the way to the defensive backfield. The Gator defense very fast, very quick. They're just getting to the ball quicker than their counterpart from Oklahoma State, especially on that front line. I think the defensive line is just quicker than Oklahoma State's offense. So far, that's translated into about a 19-point difference, 26-7 to to score. Blanchard to try a 51-yard field goal. It's blocked. And remember, that's a live ball that is going to be covered by Blanchard at about the 50-yard line. That kick, I think when, when we look at it, we'll see the kick really never had a chance. It looked like it was very low. And I think that might have had as much to do with the block Again, Kerry the defense. Blanchard, one of the top kickers in the Big Eight, and he just doesn't hit this one yeah. at all. It almost like Harvey like Thomas, 83, that got hit almost right in the face. Now, they changed the rule in college football this year, I think, regarding uh, fumbles that you can uh, move a fumble forward. Well, we saw McClendon do that in the first half. Matthews is throwing deep forever, and he's there. He's got it. Touchdown, Florida. The first college touchdown for Trey Everett. Trey Everett, the young sophomore on a post route. And Shane Matthews just floats it out front where he's got a shot. Mike Clark with a diving attempt at the last second just can't deflect the football. It was close, but uh, Everett wins the battle. It was also the first touchdown pass thrown by Shane Matthews as a Florida Gator. So a couple of firsts and the Krzyzewski extra point. Make the score of the Gators 33, the Oklahoma State Cowboys seven. We'll be back with more from Florida Field here in the third period in just one moment. Mike Clark, who was just burned on a long pass play, is out across the 15. That is taken down very quickly by Myrick Anderson. The reserve defensive back, the sophomore out of the Funiac Springs. And now we're seeing some substitutions by Coach uh, Jim Bates, the defensive coordinator. Uh, really in mass substitutions as we take another look at the, uh, the kickoff return here. The Gator defense has worked hard and uh, as they set up to stop this possession, they're putting some new bodies on the field. Chris Smith, first down and 10 from the 19-yard line. Shoots it over the middle. He's got his receiver. The tight end, Scott Copeland, that's the first ball that's even been thrown to a tight end for Oklahoma State. Copeland caught one last week against Tulsa. He is a sophomore. And that's his first reception of this afternoon. Play picks up about nine yards, almost enough for a first down. Clock running in the third period with seven minutes and seven seconds left. And the Gators in control of this game. The fullback across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Tim Pauk. Made the tackle on Cecil Wilson. Well, it didn't take long for the Gators to get on the board on that last possession. A perfectly executed pass from Shane Matthews to Trey Everett. Took all of eight seconds. <laughs> That's what you call a quick strike, I believe. Quick strike capability. First down for the Cowboys. 
Hudson. Jitterbugs across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Again, Tim Falk. The inside linebacker tripped him up. Philip Johnson in the ball game, number 64. James Spear getting a chance to play, as is Darren Mitchell. And we have an official timeout. Hudson has been shaken off, shaken up as he trots off the field. He has uh, had an injury played career. We mentioned his problems last year. He missed three full games, parts of another one or two, and bothered by a knee injury last season. Second down and six from the 37. Mayfield Whoa. dropped it, and was it picked off? Oh, he tried. I think it hit the ground. Jimmy Spencer, the ball landed in his lap, but I think it slipped through and touched the turf. Gators in a three-deep zone right here, and Jimmy Spencer is going to get a chance to catch the bobble. Oh, yeah, he dropped it. He's mad at himself, that's all. Chris Smith looks right. Then he has the poise to come back to Mayfield, but he just can't handle the ball, almost gives it up to the Gators. Now it is third down. Still six yards to go. Smith looking up top again. Pass incomplete intended for Kirksey. Kirksey, it was overthrown at the 45-yard line with Richard Fain covering. And uh, forcing the Cal Pokes into a punting situation. Excellent job by that Gator defense who right now have held the Cal Pokes to 142 yards total offense. Only 51 rushing the football. They've had to throw the ball, I'm sure, more than they would have liked. But just haven't been able to run it against this Gator defense. Spencer got it. Jimmy Spencer blocked the punt. And it is going to be down at the 38-yard line. Spencer got the block punt. He almost got one earlier in the game. Well, good for him. He's, uh, he's had a bit of a rough afternoon on occasion covering Mayfield all by himself. But right here, after he almost came up with the interception, he's got... Tremendous hustle to block the punt. Then look at him chase it. You know, he wasn't even diving, laying out. He just, that was a speed block. Coach Jim Bates giving him a hug right there because he knows that that Gator defense has just given the Gator offense fantastic field position. Let's see if Shane Matthews goes for the juggler again. Matthews over 300 yards in this game. Looking to get more right here. Dumps it to McNabb. McNabb gets about 10 more. So Matthews now up to about 318. He becomes just the 11th quarterback in Florida football history to throw over 300 yards in a game. And three of them are sitting here helping coach the Gators this afternoon. Steve Spurrier, John Reeves, and Kerwin Bell. That's a pretty good passing game uh, brain thrust right there. Matthews has obviously picked up a lot in the last nine months or so. Willie McClendon picks up the first down of the 23-yard line of Oklahoma State. One of the things that has really been impressive, there's an injured Florida player down, an offensive lineman. I think Chris Bromley yeah. has a leg cramp. I hope that's all it is. He's these offensive linemen, watch them protect. Uh, they couldn't touch the quarterback with a baseball bat, these uh, defenders from Oklahoma State. Look at that protection. No one's even close. They haven't been close all day. I don't know that he's been touched. I can't remember Shane Matthews being touched. That's just a fantastic job, and I think Chris Bromley simply cramped up because he's so tired. I hope that's all there is to it. The effort today has been reminiscent of that great wall in 1984 when Kerwin Bell was a freshman. And Chris's and brother, Phil, was, was a part of that offensive line. Yeah, it's just a Charlie horse, I think. Boy, this kid is an impressive young man. He's worked to beef himself up. Uh, look, he's, he's all cramped up, and that's dehydration. That's why they invented Gatorade here, to help these kids fight those leg cramps in this heat. Speaking of 
leg cramps and ulcers. How do you spell relief? Spurrier. Not if you're Oklahoma State. That spells trouble. 33 to 7 with 430 left in the third period. 411 yards total offense right now for the Gators. Mm. Jim Watson, by the way, is the new right guard. A redshirt freshman out of Newport Ritchie. That is a nice catch coming back to the football as Fleischman broke it up. And Alonzo Sullivan held on to the football. Now we're making some substitutions at the wide receiver position. And again, Coach Spurrier was impressed with the kids he had a chance to work with this past spring and this fall. And he thought Alonzo Sullivan was one of the kids that could see a lot of action. He comes out and does an excellent job in substitution for Trey Everett right there. The play picked up seven. McClendon to the 10, to the five. McClendon has stood up, knocked down at about the three. Good solid open field tackle by Charles Verner. The safety saved a touchdown for Oklahoma State. Look at the size of that gaping hole. Fullback lead. There's another shake and bake. McClendon for a big kid can really wheel and deal in the open field. Takes a big hit, but he's on the three-yard line. McClendon and McNabb in the I formation. They pitch it to the short side of McClendon. Look at him go in behind the big Jim Watson. Number 73 just came into the football game for Chris Bromley, and he threw the block that helped spring him along with Dexter McNabb. McClendon's second touchdown of the afternoon. It's 39 to 7 with the extra point forthcoming. Watch 73 up here, Jim Yarborough. You can see him right there. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Right in his face, right in his shoulder pads, and driving him backwards. That was Jim Watson who came in for the injured Chris Brum. That shows you what fresh legs can do. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do that all the time, but sometimes the body doesn't, doesn't respond. But right there, Jim Watson said, hey, guys, I want a piece of action out here, and he throws a devastating block. Krzyzewski splits another one right through the uprights. Gators are up by 33 now with 314 left in the third period to score the Gators 40, the Cowboys 7. One of the busiest individuals on this field has been number 19 this afternoon, Ryan Rulin. He kicks off again with his team up 40 to 7. And a new man uh, returning him now, number 22, is Ronnie Fisher. And Fisher is taken down much like his predecessor in this game at about the 27, 28-yard line. Carlton Miles made the tackle. Another scoring drive for the Florida Gators culminated by Willie McClendon's three-yard jaunt. Field position has been in the Gators' favor this afternoon, and that... You can credit, I think, to some outstanding defensive play. Harvey Thomas is being helped off the field. Yeah, Harvey's been hustling so much this afternoon on specialty teams, doing a terrific job, and I think he just cramped up again right there. He was, I was watching him, and as soon as he got hit, his uh, hamstring looked like it cramped up there on him. First down and 10 for Oklahoma State from their 28-yard line. Hudson breaking through the left side of the line out to the 40-yard line. That'll be good for an Oklahoma State first down. Let's check in with Steve Babick for an injury update. Jim, you talked about cramps with Harvey Thomas. Well, that was the problem with Chris Bromley, that last offensive series. Chris Bromley had cramps in his right thigh, and he'll be able to go back in in the next offensive series. He's okay. Jim Watson might not let him go back in. Jim Watson, after he threw that crushing block on the score, says, hey, Chris, take, it, take a quarter off. I want to play some more. I would suspect we'll see Mr. Watson and a good many of his second team friends in this fourth period. Hudson almost broke one that time. There are penalty flags at the line of scrimmage. You know, this passing effort by Shane Matthews, he's got now 325 yards passing. That's the seventh best passing game in Florida history. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Uh, 
And Pat Jones doesn't like it, that's for sure, as we see him pacing the sideline. But he's not the only coach that's ever been concerned about stopping a Steve Spurrier offense. Everybody in the country is concerned about it when they face an offense that Steve Spurrier produces. Penalty was against the Gators. It's second down and five. From the 46, Hudson again gets the call. And he is tripped up by Stefan Mack, number 91. The junior out of Apopka High School program. The Orlando area, which has produced a lot of outstanding college talent through the years. Mark Murray, uh, another Apopka player. Rodney Brewer, who played quarterback for the Gators a few seasons go ago. Blue darters. Yep. 142 left here in the third period. Second down and four. Penalty flags down. And Earl Wheeler unloads it and throws it away. As he was chased by Michael Brandon and Brad Culpepper all over the Oklahoma State side of the 50-yard line. There are flags everywhere. You know, the thought was that Earl Wheeler would be the starting quarterback this year. They thought he had an edge on Chris Smith, but Wheeler was a baseball player. Oklahoma State has a great baseball program. Earl Wheeler chose to play spring baseball last year and just wasn't able to come back this fall and take the job away from Chris Smith. The job was wide open, but Chris Smith won it, the fifth-year senior. Wheeler's a sophomore, and now we're... Get a chance to see Wheeler in action. I know he wishes the circumstances were a little different. Not too much fun to go out on the field when you're trailing 40 to 7 and the coach says put the ball in the air. And the other team is bending back their ears and coming right at you. With fresh bodies, you know, guys that haven't been in that are eager to get back there and get a piece of him. A holding penalty against Oklahoma State pushes it back to the 36. Second down and 15. Wheeler steps up in the pocket. The catch by Mayfield will be enough for an Oklahoma State first down. Curtis Mayfield, a junior out of Dallas, Texas. Mason Mayfield. Not by Spencer. Showing you why he's considered one of the, if not the top pass receiver in the Big Eight. Mayfield, a split to the left. Wheeler looks to throw it, and it is dropped. Shannon Colbert, a freshman wide receiver, couldn't hold on to the football. Wheeler threw that ball right on target. That was a timing pass, and it was right there. Colbert couldn't find the handle, but uh, Wheeler... Only took, I think, three snaps as well last year, but he was the sophomore that they thought was going to lead them for a couple of years. But again, he lost the job to Chris Smith, who we saw start this afternoon. This is the second game of the year, once again, for the Cowboys. They beat Tulsa 7-3 to in their opener. Wheeler throwing off his back foot. Just throws it up for grabs, and look who caught it. How about that catch by Mr. Mayfield? Well, Fee Bartley makes the mistake of not looking for the football. He's eyeball to eyeball with Mayfield, but at no time does he ever glance to see if the ball's in the air. Monty Grove should be yelling at him as he's coming over. Probably might have been ball, ball. If the ball's in the air, the defensive backs let each other know. They start screaming ball, ball, but Fee Bartley never took his eyes off of Mayfield, and Mayfield simply stopped, jumped up, caught the pass. Wheeler showed a strong arm there also. He was falling back on his back foot. Threw that ball about 40, 45 yards in the air. Only 36 seconds left in the period. Oh, look out. Got to call out a fumble, it looks like, and Huey Richardson's got the football. Oh, and Coach Pat Jones is saying, hey, his arm was going forward. He's uh, 
Screaming, give me a break right there. That was, and they're going to give him a break. Yeah. They're going to call it incomplete pass. Let's see if Guys his arm mild, really. moves forward no. at all. And that was close. I don't know. It looked like it was uh, in that limbo position. Yeah. You know, it was right before he started forward. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they are going to give it to the Gators, aren't they? So, evidently, they felt that the arm was going backwards, not forwards or was stationary. Kyle or, Morris is now the quarterback. Well, good. Let's see what Kyle can do here. Now, he had one series in the first half. No pressure, that's for sure. A couple of other fresh bodies out there. There's Eric Rett, the backup tailback behind McClendon, pushing it out to about the 39-yard line, a gain of eight. Kelvin Randolph is... Now in the ball game, a redshirt freshman, a fullback out of Tallahassee, number 30. There he is, right at the top of your screen. A lot of reserve offensive linemen have come into the ball game, and that's the end of the third period with the Gators firmly in control of this one against Oklahoma State, the season opener from Florida Field in the Steve Spurrier era, and the Gators go into the fourth period with a huge advantage. We start the fourth period from Florida Field. The Gators leading Oklahoma State 40 to 7. A natural grass playing turf, those blue jerseys signaling the start of a new era. The University of Florida football, the Steve Spurrier era. And it is off to a flying start this afternoon against Oklahoma State. And we do have some new personnel in abundance on the field right now as it looks like every position has been filled with an alternate. Yeah, Gant Crouch is now the center. Jim Watson, who threw a big block a moment ago, is a guard. Tony Rolls a guard. Ryan Taylor and John Williams are the tackles. Kyle Morris is the quarterback. Eric Rett is the running back across the 40 and out to the 43-yard line. That will be good for a Gator first down. The coach loves to be in this situation, David, where he can get his younger players on the field kid that's kids that have worked extremely hard in practice and might not necessarily get a chance to play that much but they're out there against some strong competition right now and they're going to get some film on these guys and they're going to see who's getting better who's getting worse excellent chance for some of these kids to impress the coaches right now on that gator offense morris steps up in the pocket his intended receiver was the tight end keller but Greg Keller was overthrown. Excellent protection by that new offensive line. Well, I wonder, Jim, how the folks in Alabama are feeling tonight. Their football team upset by Southern Mississippi this other afternoon. Were they? Gene Stallings, first game with the Crimson Tide. And I wonder how Bill Curry might be feeling up in Lexington, Kentucky. Well, I, I know Bill Curry personally, and he's a class act. I don't know Coach Stallings, but I know he's very disappointed. You can bet on that. Keller makes the catch this time. Perfectly thrown pass from Morris. And it's a first down for the Gators at the 44-yard line. Of course, next week, the Gators will play Alabama up in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I don't know that uh, you'd want them in a sour uh, state of mind. Uh, it would be difficult enough going to Alabama, but hey. This Gator uh, team is very impressive this afternoon, so I think they can go anywhere and play anybody. And I'm looking forward to going with them. Eric Ratt on the draw. The sprint draw across the 40 to the 35 and down to the 33-yard line of Oklahoma State. Werner, the freshman, the homegrown product out of Stillwater, makes the tackle. Rett. Looking like he can definitely handle that backup tailback. Again, position. it's a bit of a draw action, David. It's not a really a handoff to Emmett Smith type of play that we're used to. It's a bit of a draw right there. That's what the coach features in his offense. Pass first, draw, screen. There it is again. That breaks two tackles, but cannot get away from Woolridge. He does get 13 more, however, to the 20-yard line. This Florida offense, Jim, really 
puts pressure, doesn't it, on a defense, uh, just the way it's set up, the way it's designed to throw the ball and stretch you out, push you back, and then pop you with that draw. Yeah, and I think what you see here, too, is a case where the coach is staying with his offense, but he's not, you know, trying to open it up and uh, pour it on, so to speak. They're just staying with a consistent offense right there. They're just gaping holes by some fresh bodies on that offense. There's some tired defensive linemen out there for Oklahoma State, too. Ansley, that time, though, got to the quarterback at the 25-yard line. Richie Ansley's been out there about all afternoon long. And uh, Jay Fleischman, the excellent junior safety, just went into leg cramps uh, deep in the secondary as he was in coverage right there. These kids are fighting a losing battle against that uh, leg cramp situation right now. You really feel sorry for them because if you've ever had a severe leg cramp, you know they're in devastating pain right now. And you can't make it go away. It's hard to make it go away. The muscle just tightening up on Fleischman. He yeah. was he was just in coverage, and it w he went down like a sniper got him. He, he just fell. Uh, he just cramped up. You know, he took... There's a relaxed young man, Shane Matthews. Starting quarterback for the Gators, and you can see what he's done this afternoon with his first collegiate start. Young man had taken two snaps in college football before today. It, you know, very uh, reminiscent of Kerwin Bell in his first game against Miami down in Tampa in 1984. Well, you remember why Kerwin Bell played in that game? Well, Dale Dorman, he went down about three days before the season started with the leg injury. In practice, and it was a battlefield promotion, and Kerwin got the chance and was terrific. But I don't know that Shane Matthews even gave himself a... A realistic chance of starting he probably thought he could compete for the job but I'll bet he's really surprised that he's the guy he's the horse we're gonna ride he's done a terrific job today no question about that Matthews has done nothing but solidify his position as starting quarterback heading into a big one early season next week against Alabama every game so very critical if you have your sights set on a Southeastern Conference championship although the league is so tough that one loss is probably not going to knock you out of a conference race. Yeah, you got a shot at least tying, you know, three-way tie last year. Terrence Barber makes the catch. There's a late flag throw. Fred Gaines made the tackle. I think they're going to tack a couple more on. No, it's a clip against Florida. Well, maybe with the way the flag was thrown, we might have a late hit or a personal foul against Oklahoma State. Looks like the guys in blue are going backwards. You know, not too many penalties, though, uh, on both teams, right? Uh, both teams have been Going to penalize 15 yards, flipping. pretty well, consistent with, with their play, not getting penalties, penalties that just kill coaches. Well, is he active down there or what, Steve Spurrier? <laughs> Was he like that as a player? I've always no. heard the stories about how calm and collected no. he always was. You could set a bomb off beside him when he was playing, and he wouldn't blink, but he's very animated as a coach. He's much more animated as a coach than I ever thought he would be. Second down and long, long for the first. Eric Rett breaking more tackles. Finally, Joe King drags him down at the 23-yard line. Eric Rett scoring some points here in this second half of the football game you know I think the, the coaches I would think Jim I think the difference between Steve Spurrier the player and Steve Spurrier the coach as we see this screen pass here was that and an excellent run by Eric Rett who has a lot of talent but Steve Spurrier the coach knows he can't go out there and do anything so he's jumping up and down and doing what he can do as a coach as a player he was resting because he knew he'd get a shot Morris going for the end zone for Barber near the goal line, and the ball a short hop to him at about the two. And that'll bring up fourth down, and here comes the Gator field goal team. Barber was breaking over the middle of the field and was open. The ball was underthrown. Quick spell, Shashesky. He's got a lot of C's, Z's, <laughs> and W's in there, and a couple of K's, I think, too. Boy, this kid, is that him, 13? Yep. He impressed us at Baton Rouge last year, didn't he? He hit a big one. He sure did. I think that was his first kick, wasn't it? Last year at LSU. Game winner. I think it was. 
He has just kicked another one through. This one from about 38, 39 yards out. And the beat goes on from Florida Field. With 11.34 left in the fourth period, the Gators now up 43-7. Florida gets set to kick the ball off again to Oklahoma State, now leading 43 to 7 in the football game. And if you're the Cowboys, you're probably just wondering uh, how much longer this thing is going to go on because this has been a long afternoon from the get-go for Oklahoma State. Florida jumped all over them. There are your deep men for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They've used several different ones. That's Fisher on the left. And Mayfield on this near side, it's going to be Fisher from the one-yard line. And oh. Fisher is hit head-on by Stefan Mack at the 20-yard line. Oh, the reason that hurt me was I thought Stefan Mack ducked his head. You can never, ever, ever duck your head. And it just makes the collision more violent, but much more dangerous as well, especially if you're the guy ducking your head. Watch Stefan Mack come in here. Ooh, see that right there? Nothing wrong with hitting hard, but you got to keep that head up. 11-25 left in the football game. Earl Wheeler calls the signals for the Cowboys. He fakes the handoff and hits his receiver, Kirksey, at the 40-yard line. And Kirksey is taken down by Will White at the 42-yard line. Robert Kirksey, junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Will White did an excellent job at uh, safety last year for the Gators and continues to play well, but uh, this Wheeler kid's doing a very nice job. Uh, Earl Wheeler, again, the sophomore that uh, they thought last spring would be their quarterback this year, but he didn't start the first two games, but he's looking good here in the action that he's seeing against the Gators. Uh-oh. That ball is picked up. Go, 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 go! I thought you can advance a fumble. I thought that was the new rule. They have blown it dead at the 36-yard line. It's the Gators football. Well, I think the official might have blown his whistle, but correct me if I'm wrong, I think the new rule in college football is you can advance a fumble. Well, what would the difference be when Willie McClendon fumbled the ball and advanced it in the first half in I'd, this situation? Evidently, I don't know. Number 92 is Darren Mickle, who I don't see why he couldn't advance. It used to be you could only catch if you caught the ball in the air. The ball is at the 36. The Gators have possession with 10.46 left in the fourth period. Eric Rett breaks away from one. Now cuts back the other way. Got a block from his quarterback, Kyle Morris. And Rett takes it down to the 20-yard line. What a block by number seven. You don't see that very often. Kevin Blake made the tackle. Little ad living here by number 33. Nothing that way. Let's let's try this side of the field. Now watch number seven. Good block. Derek Rett, a lot of speed. He got turned around, did a 180, and said, "Hey, I'll go the other way." It's first down at the 20-yard line. This is fullback Terrell Jackson. Getting a couple of yards. Let's check with Steve Babick on the sideline. David and Jim, one thing I'm very impressed with the work on the sidelines is the organization that the new assistant coaches and head coach Steve Spurrier have on the sidelines. Very well organized. The players know where to go. They know where their meetings are. And when sometimes you have miscommunications, you're not having that today, the first game. Very impressive. And by the way, I can tell it's the first game of the year, and Jim Yarbrough is very excited up there, so I can tell it's football season. Good to hear that, Jim. Jim I haven't Jim jumped out of the press box yet. So. He is excited about this Gator offense. That pitch hit the lead back, the fullback, and the back. And Oklahoma State fell on it. There's a mix-up there on that play because uh, on the toss sweep, Kyle Morris pitched the ball right into the back of number 34, Terrell Jackson. Yeah, he pitched to the fullback, I think, where he was supposed to pitch to the tailback. Uh, we won't really know, but... He saw the first blue jersey and hit him in the back with it where it should have been to Eric Red, I believe. But David, look at the total offense for the Gators. What's that number say? 5-1-0. Oh. 
Isn't that incredible? Yard with nine and a half minutes left still. 500 yards total offense. You think this score and this this game is going to turn a few heads in the Southeastern Conference, Jim? I think in the nation. Yeah. That's intercepted. Mickel going to take it in for the touchdown. Big Darren Mickel. Last year, Mickel was a victim of Proposition 48. Well, look at this play right here. Look at that vertical jump, all of two inches, I believe. Darren Mickle becomes the hero in his first extensive action on Florida Field. That's will be a, a thrill he'll never forget. <laughs> he just reached up. He never left the green grass. There was no light between his shoe and that green grass. He just reached up and picked it off. Of course, he's 6'4 with about a... 12-foot wingspan, it looks like. So he made a great play. Krzyzewski kicks another extra point. And the Gators have hit the half-century mark with 9.21 left in this fourth period. Whoa. Well, even the Florida defense has gotten into the scoring act here at Florida Field this afternoon as sophomore Darren Mickel, who sat out last year because he did not make academic requirements coming out of high school gets his first extensive playing time here in the second half and he just picked off a pass and raced into the end zone by the way Jim Mickle was a fine basketball player in high school he might not have been much of a leaper he must have been setting picks yeah <laughs> Ruland kicks off again Mayfield from the five yard line oh Mayfield tripped up by Myrick Anderson once again. Anderson has been a force on the special teams all afternoon long. He might have hurt his shoulder there as well. He's holding it. Uh, boy, those guys are do or die on those specialty teams. They got a lot of guts, a lot of, a lot of moxie to play on those teams. Fearless. There's your scoring drive summary. Not a lot to that. Mickle took care of it all in one fell swoop. Wheeler to a new man at the tailback spot. And that is Vernon Brown out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. James Spear made the tackle as the lights have been turned on here at Florida Field in the late afternoon, but they went out some time ago for Oklahoma State. The score is 50 to 7. And a happy bunch of Gators here in Gainesville. You think this game might relieve a bit of the tension that has been uh, so evident for the last couple of weeks? Vernon Brown gets the handoff. Brown is hit by Monty Gro across the 30 and out to about the 34, 35 yard line. Goes Vernon Brown. Monty Gro doing a nice job making the tackle there. It's good for a, an Oklahoma State first down. Clock running, 8.17 left. This one has been over since midway in the second period as far as the outcome, but not a whole lot of people have left until just now. A few begin to trickle out. They have thoroughly enjoyed this new Florida football team. Wheeler finds Parker, who steps out of bounds and stops the clock with 7.54 left in the fourth period yeah, that's a lot of time too you know almost eight minutes there's a lot of things that can happen in eight minutes both for the pokes and the gators great job guys hey big beef looks like chris bromley there number 52 is all right mark white glenn neely number 70 cal dixon hisham ishmael all across your television screen right there i'm surprised there was a camera lens big enough to catch all of that beef Second down and six. Wheeler dumps it to Brown. Brown is dumped by Darren Mickle. There's that man again, number 92. This guy was one of the most highly recruited defensive linemen in high school football a couple of years ago. Number 92, Darren Mickle out of Miami Senior High. And now you can see why, Jim. He's 
got good uh, foot speed for a guy his size. Well, when I played for the Gators in the 60s, we used to get a lot of ball players out of Dade County, but uh, over the last couple of decades, not many guys have been leaving Dade County, but I think Coach Spurrier is going to change that. It's third down and 10. Wheeler throws a nice pass. It's caught by Mayfield. It'll be a first down for Oklahoma State. Well, there's one player who's had a big afternoon offensively. Probably the only one, although Hudson put up some pretty good numbers rushing the football, but Mayfield who caught the only touchdown pass, the only score of the day for Oklahoma State, has been in on a lot of plays. 7.08 left. One of those catches. The only score for the Cowboys for Mayfield. Oh. But pressure's on, but... Mark Murray got tackled right there. Wheeler throws it a mile in the air, oh. and it's incomplete. Monty, Gro Monty Gro almost picked it off in the end zone. Great play, Monty Gro. He had position, then he looked up to find the football. He had great position, then he lo was looking for the football, almost came up with the interception. Just a terrific play, but poor Mark Murray was tackled uh, as he was rushing the quarterback. Uh, it's kind of a combination of a clip and a tackle. Jim, I'm impressed again, though, with the arm strength of Earl Wheeler. Oh, yeah, he unloaded it, didn't he? Look at Monty Gro making the nice play right there. Almost offensive pass interference, but mercifully, they didn't call it on him. Wheeler threw that ball way up high into the air, and it traveled 60-plus yards to its destination. That one is overthrown. I think his intended receiver was number 22, Fisher. Then it was almost caught by Shannon Colbert. Let's see again if uh, we can figure out exactly who it was intended for. Well, this is your standard ricochet pass. You want to deflect it off the first receiver I and see. have it bounce into the chest of your secondary receiver. Well, it almost worked then. I hadn't thought of it in that way. Wheeler is 6 for 10 this afternoon. His team with 229 yards in total offense. Mayfield again, dragged down by Bartley at the 35-yard line. That'll be another Oklahoma State first down. Well, that's going to be a tough decision next week for the Cowboys. This Earl Wheeler is doing a, a really nice job. We know Mayfield's got his job nailed down, but who's going to be the quarterback the rest of the season for the Cowboys? Will it be Earl Wheeler, who's looked very impressive as he's been thrown into battle and... Chris Smith who started the ball game but Wheeler is under tremendous pressure but he yet continues to deliver the football you saw the numbers on Mayfield who's gone over the 100 yard mark in receiving yards pass complete once again near the first down mark the fullback Cecil Wilson has it down to about the 27 yard line of Florida well next week you mentioned next week for Oklahoma State they don't have uh, quite the challenge that they've had here today against Florida. They play Northern Iowa back home in Stillwater. So they can regroup, retool a little bit, getting set for the Big 8 Conference schedule. Second down and two. Wheeler has his receiver open at the 21-yard line. The ball is caught by Charles Johnson. And it's Dell Spear making the tackle. And Brian Montgomery. Northern Iowa. Name me the city that Northern Iowa is in. Now, you've been around. You've been on many airplanes and buses. You probably know that. No, I really don't know. I don't either. <laughs> but I can look it up. Wheeler throws it under... Extreme pressure from Mark Murray. And the pass is incomplete. Northern Iowa. How far north is Northern it's Iowa? It's located in Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids. What's their nickname? Their nickname? The Panthers. The Panthers of Northern Iowa Next travel week. to Stillwater. Yep. 
Cowboys have second down and 10 from the 21 yard line. The score is 50 to 7, Florida. Here comes a Gator blitz, and there goes the quarterback, Wheeler. Gerald Odom with the sack. And a small assist from Philip Johnson, but it was Gerald Odom from his inside linebacker position. And he's still pumped up. He's still excited. They can't drag him off the field, I'll bet. Here he comes. Runs around the guard. Keeps his balance, comes up with the sack. Gators have a few starting defenders still on the field. Brad Culpepper. There's uh, Gator defensive coordinator Jim Bates. Came from Tennessee, David. Last he was the year. coordinator for the Tennessee Volunteers last year. I don't know that he was the coordinator, but he was on that staff. He's pumped up still, isn't he? Does not want to see Oklahoma State put one in here. With 4.13 left in the fourth period. Wheeler's in trouble again. Brad Culpepper gets the quarterback sack. Pushing the Cowboys back to the 40-yard line. You know, even though the game is obviously out of reach, uh, we saw Jim Bates uh, yelling from the sideline, the defensive coordinator, Brad Culpepper, coming up with a sack there. Those guys are very statistically oriented. You know, they want their defense to put up some big numbers or little numbers as it may be for the opposing offense. So they're glad to shut down Oklahoma State every time they can. Well, those total offensive numbers have gone back the other direction the last couple of plays. As Blanchard kicks the ball through the end zone and the Gators take possession at their 20. With three minutes, 26 seconds left in the fourth period. A record crowd at Florida Field has watched as the Gators took the lead early and have jumped all over the Cowboys from Stillwater. The new quarterback for the Florida Gators is Brian Fox, a third-year sophomore. And Fox hands it off to the tailback, Kedra Malone, out of Niceville, Florida, who carries it out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Malone was playing for Niceville High School last season. And there's the quarterback, Brian Fox, who started at Purdue, transferred back to his home state. He's out of West Orange High School in Orlando. Freshman of the year at Purdue in 1988 as uh, their quarterback then decided to transfer to Florida and now competing for the Gatorback uh, quarterback position. Malone again the ball carrier and again getting, getting a good chunk of yardage as he carries it out across the 45 to the 46 yard line. 245 left in the game. Willie Jackson is also in the ball game. His dad, Willie Jackson, was one of the first blacks ever recruited by the University of Florida. I think Willie was the number two black. Uh, Leonard George. Leonard George was number one. Yep. And off once again to the tailback Malone. Hit in the backfield and stopped by Chris Calhoun, a freshman Calhoun. defensive tackle out of Dallas, Texas. Clock ticking down near the two-minute mark. You know, I think that's a great story. Willie Jackson being one of the first blacks recruited by the University of Florida. Then some 20 years later, he thinks enough about the university to encourage his own son to come here. I think that tells a good story about this place. Willie Jackson also played a part in last year's Gator basketball team. But it's Kedra Malone with the football, and Malone may have gotten another first down. I think he did to about the 43-yard line. Here's a guy that was a two-time All-State performer at Niceville High School. He rushed for, what, 1,200 yards? A little better than 1,200 yards as a junior and the same as a senior. Well, your mind's like a steel trap, isn't it? I can read, too. <laughs> Where is Niceville? Niceville is in the panhandle up north of uh, Destin, Fort Walton Beach. 
Brian Fox pumps once, throws, and it is caught at the 29-yard line. This Gator defense just keeps on cranking it out. Aubrey Hill, a freshman wide receiver out of Miami, down Florida. makes the catch. A true freshman out of Carroll City High School. Now here's a guy, Jim, that caught 26 passes in a wishbone offense in high school last year. <laughs> That's not easy to do, is it? That's almost impossible to do. Of course, Walt Frazier, one of the top high school coaches around. Down to about the 25-yard line. And only 43 seconds left in this football game. That was Terrell Jackson, the ball carrier. But look uh, how many folks have stayed around to watch every second of a 50-7 to seven game. I think uh, a clear indication, Jim, that they're excited about their football here in uh, Gainesville. I would not have predicted a, a record crowd, though. That's really amazing, isn't it? That's a great tribute to the excitement that Steve Spurrier has generated as he starts uh, the Florida program into the decade of the 90s. Jackson again carries the football across the 20 to the 19, and that should do it. <laughs> Clock winding down, and it is a successful beginning to the Steve Spurrier era, and there's the man. They're standing and cheering this Florida football team as Steve Spurrier shakes hands with Oklahoma State head man Pat Jones after the Gators walloped Oklahoma State by the score of 50 to 7. We'll be back in just a moment to Florida Field. We are back to Florida Field where the Florida Gators have dominated play here this afternoon against the Oklahoma State Cowboys 50 to 7. The final score, David Steele and Jim Yarborough, we have thoroughly enjoyed, as I'm sure you have also, uh, Gator fans everywhere watching this one. You know, Coach Steve Spurrier was concerned about whether or not his offense was ready to perform. I really don't think Coach Spurrier was sandbagging, Jim. I, I think there were some real concerns there, but uh, they turned out to, to be uh, not much of a factor and needless. Right, David. And as uh, one of his friends, I'm really extremely happy for him that things went the way that we all hoped that it would. Uh, the Gator defense is terrific, and during preseason, they They'd given this Gator offense a lot of problems, and Spurrier thought his offense was not performing uh, well at all, but today uh, they were performing on all cylinders. Uh, we understand that the 394 yards might be number three in, in school history in, in passing offense. We mentioned uh, at the opening that Coach Spurrier averaged 500 yards per game at Duke last year, and what does he do in his first game at the University of Florida? His offense puts 520 or 30-some yards on the on the uh, field and uh, the Gator defense uh, we knew that they, they were tough and they continued to dominate under new defensive coordinator Jim Bates well the Gators were right on target here this afternoon as was our sideline man Steve Babick let's check back with Steve one more time Steve well thanks David you know from my perspective on the sideline two things impressed me very much the offensive protection by that offensive line Jim Yarbrough just talked about the stats and the success through the passing lanes well that front five did a, a fantastic job of protecting quarterback Shane Matthews made his life a lot easier the second thing that I was impressed with was the overall team speed of the Gator defense especially on that front four uh, they put a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks for Oklahoma State and you, you always know that the uh, defensive backfield has team speed but when your linebackers and your front four have team speed you've got a defense that can get to the ball very quickly and Jim Bates defense showed that today against Oklahoma State. Back up to you guys. Really no surprise regarding the Gator defense. That bunch with eight starters returning from a year ago and ranked third in the country in, uh, in total defense. But the offense, uh, Steve, you're right, and Jim Yarborough, what a performance. Let's take a look at the final stats from this afternoon's game. And you see the total domination, although I'm not even sure the stats uh, truly indicate the true domination of this game, Jim. And Oklahoma State has a fine program, and they have a fine team, and I think they were expecting to match up well with the Gators. I think they're very surprised, as surprised as anyone, that they really were out of it so early, and the Gators were able to put up some big numbers on the scoreboard. Uh, the Gator defense scoring, as well as the Gator offense scoring. Well, it was fun this time. We look forward to next Saturday when the Gators travel to Tuscaloosa to take on the Alabama Crimson Tides. Sports Channel's next University of Florida football telecast will be Saturday, September 15th at 11.30 p.m. when the Gators visit Tuscaloosa, Alabama to kick off against the Alabama Crimson Tide from Bryant-Denny Stadium. Check local listings for Sports Channel and Gator Vision coverage of this game in your area.
University of Florida football feature. I think the whole offense was ready to get a different opponent on the other side of the ball, and, you know, we just executed everything fairly well today. Program! Program! Get together, program! 250! Program! Steve Spurrier down in the center, takes the snap, rolls left, looking for receiver, throws deep in the end zone, touchdown to Richard Trapp. Bell gives off to Anderson, up the middle of the 35, the 30, Anderson the 20, Anderson the 5, touchdown, Neil Anderson and the Florida Gators have taken the lead. This line up in an eye formation, there's the handoff here to Kevin Smith, who hurdles over the top, touchdown Florida! Outstanding. I think it just came down to what I thought was the, maybe the biggest challenge, what I thought was best for me, uh, coming back to my alma mater. Florida Football Highlights with Steve Spurrier is brought to you by Dairy Farmers Incorporated, producers of real Florida fresh milk. By First Union, First Union Service, we guarantee it. By Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. By Osmos and Great Southern Wood, the most trusted name in wood preserving. And by Scotty, your Florida home improvement source since 1924. It was a most exciting debut to a new decade as the Florida Gators shot down the Cowboys of Oklahoma State 50-7. to Hi, everybody. This is Mick Hubert with Coach Steve Spurrier welcoming you to Florida Gator football highlights. Florida flattened Oklahoma State to the tune of 567 yards of total offense, including 394 yards through the air by Gator quarterbacks. Shane Matthews throwing for 332 yards on 20 of 29. Meanwhile, the Gator defense registered six sacks, blocked a punt, blocked a field goal, scored a safety, and scored a touchdown. Whew. Congratulations, Steve, on that win yesterday. Well, Mick, certainly it was a, a big win for us. Uh, we can't be misled by this win, though. Oklahoma State is not near the team they were a couple of years ago with Barry Sanders and that group when they were 10-2. and two. Uh, But the thing I think we're most proud of our guys is the effort in, in which we displayed yesterday. Uh, I can't remember a, a team playing with such emotion, enthusiasm the entire game, and, and this is something we got to build on. We've got to do this each week. But uh, as far as really getting tested, uh, this Alabama game coming up this week will, will really test us to see what kind of team we are. There was great emotion all throughout Florida Field as a record crowd sat in the stands, but uh, the composure of all the players, as you mentioned, seemed to be right on the mark, including uh, your rookie quarterback. Well, certainly we're all proud of Shane and Trey Everett, a uh, mm -hmm. couple of players that uh, have not played before. Uh, everyone really contributed to the victory. Uh, the offensive line uh, was near perfect yesterday. Uh, defensively, our guys were all over the place, which uh, I think our fans and everyone are accustomed to this happening. Uh, Huey Richardson getting a sack, Darren Mickle a touchdown, and so forth. Uh, certainly, it was a big day for us. And the fans, uh, the greatest fans in the world, they, they came to hoot and holler and scream. And, and fortunately, we had a lot of big plays to, to get them screaming about it. I'm sure you felt your football team was ready to play, but until I actually take the field, I guess one never really knows for sure if it's all right there. Mick, we felt pretty good going into this game. We were able to see some tapes on Oklahoma State, and, and we had the best team in this game. We were three or four touchdowns better than that team yesterday. Uh, what we needed to do was just go play, play the way we were capable, and we did that. So uh, hopefully we can keep doing that, but uh, to beat some of these teams on the schedule down the road, we've got to play better than we did yesterday. All right, let's take a look now at the highlights yesterday at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Florida Field where the Gators winning by a score of 50 to 7. We'll take a look to see an uh, opening crowd of more than 75,000, a record for Florida Field. And if you got in your seats late, well, shame on you because the game got started in a big hurry by the Gators, winning the opening toss and taking the opening kickoff right down the field. That's right, Mick. We talked about this opening pass play. It's a crossing route with uh, Ernie Mills coming across. As you see, he was wide open. That was because Trey Everett cleared out the whole side of the field over there. I want you to notice the protection Shane has in all these passes here. Uh, here's Trey Everett over the middle. We got to get Trey running forward after he catches it, but uh, fine throw and catch. The next play, we get into a three wide receiver formation, and Ernie Mills makes a fantastic catch here. Nice throw by Shane, but you see he got hit right as the ball was there. Excellent catch by Ernie. We're down on the two-yard line, and uh, Dexter McNabb takes it in. Fine block by Greg Keller over there at tight end, as well as Glenn Neely. So that was five plays and 70 yards in a minute and 50 seconds. Right. 
Sometimes you open up with that no-huddle offense and you throw three straight incompletions, but fortunately we hit all three. Ooh. I tell you, that hit had to hurt the quarterback a little bit. Mark Murray and Huey Richardson put a sandwich job on, on their quarterback there. This was their big tailback. Gerald Hudson is a fine back. He broke some tackles. I, I know he had some yards yesterday, uh, but overall our defense uh, was outstanding. Here's Shane Matthews throwing Kirk Kirkpatrick. Uh, down the middle of a cover two zone, we just an excellent throw and catch. Kirk, a, as we expected, called everything he touched yesterday. Here's Kirk again, out in the out in the flat here. Tremendous effort here, trying to get in the end zone. Shane goes ahead and gets his first touchdown. I tell you what, Shane knows how to quarterback sneak the ball, Mick. He was. He was player of the year in Mississippi back in 1987, so he's, he knows how to play that position. Here's the run by Hudson. We, he ran through some arms there. Gerald Odom uh, made a fine tackle there to save the touchdown at that point. Uh, our defense toughened up here. I'm trying to get some guys in and out of the game. Uh, we, we need to work on our substitution. Sometimes you get a little mixed up there. Had a little defensive breakdown here. They hit us on a a corner route and we should have been able to cover that but we didn't we didn't cover that so that made it 14 to 7 early in the second quarter as close as they would get right it's uh it's a ball game but uh, as you can see here's the other trey everett over the middle excellent protection again we bogged down and arden shashesky comes on and boots his first field goal of the season sort of snuck it in the right pole there Tell you, Arden is a fine kicker. Uh, all of our kickers uh, performed very well yesterday. And here we get a sack. Uh, it's a James Spear. That was James in there. He, he's actually a backup player at that position, but uh, we play a lot of defensive players, Mick. We feel like that second group is, is very close. And of course, here's Huey getting the sack. We had a little stun on up front there. Uh, Jerry Anderson and Bob Sanders, our defensive line coaches, uh, have done an excellent job preparing these guys on those stunts up front. Well, here's Dexter McNabb's <laughs> screen pass and run. Uh, he breaks about six or seven tackles here. Someone asked me after the game, uh, did you work on him dropping that ball and picking it up? I didn't even see him drop it during the game. He didn't break stride. And here's the touchdown, Willie, uh, lunging in from about one yard out. Going over Ish Ishmael and Mark White over there and Chris Bromley on that side. So with the safety and then the subsequent touchdown, it was nine quick points for the Gators, and they took the lead in the locker room, a very comfortable lead at this point by the score of 26 to 7. We'll come back and talk with Coach Spurrier about what he said to his team at the half and continue with more Florida football highlights with Steve Spurrier after these messages. Another success story played out on Florida Field was the field itself, natural grass surface for the first time in 20 years. There were many people who worked many hours to get the field ready in time for the opening game, as we hear in this halftime feature from Steve Batten. Florida Field. Since its first season in 1930, it has experienced a lot of growth changes. It has expanded in every possible modern way from the press box to the locker room. But sometimes it's good to return to old ways. And the 1990 Florida football season marks the return of natural grass in Florida Field. Grass. It was on this type of surface that many Gator Grace displayed their talents, including Curry head coach Steve Spurrier. Florida Field had a grass surface until 1971, when then Gator coach Doug Dickey installed artificial turf. Doug's rug was tailored to his running style of football. Nineteen years later, two things happened. Florida named a new head football coach, and he wanted to turn the clock back. Yes, we do want to return Ben Hill Griffin. Florida Field to natural grass as soon as possible. I've talked with Coach Arnold Barger. He's in uh, complete agreement with that. I just believe it's a safer playing surface. I think it's, it's better for not only the players, but also for fan comfort. So up with the carpet. 
down with the sod, power washers and carpet sweepers were replaced by the sound of lawn mowers and water sprinklers. Jim Birdwell, the superintendent at the University Golf Course, is now wearing a second hat as in-house consultant for Florida's new grass surface. Well, there was really no hesitation in, in going with 419 Bermuda grass. As I said, it's, it's so common. This is a, a quality material that's uh, used uh, throughout, even soccer, uh, baseball. This is an excellent grass field. I just can't believe how it has come around. Our ground crew here has done a tremendous job getting this thing ready. There are two things you can now count on when you come to Florida Field. The smell of natural grass and the sight of grass stains on uniforms. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babbitt. Steve, I know you were pleased with the playing field yesterday, no question about it. I think everyone's excited about playing on natural grass, uh, not only the players, but the fans. The heat factor there yesterday on a 90-plus degree day was not near as severe as if uh, we'd had the AstroTurf. And plus, the bumps and bruises when you hit the natural grass are not near as severe the next day. So uh, we're really excited uh, about the natural grass. Appreciate Coach Orange Barger spearheading the drive that uh, got natural grass put back in there. All right, we'll take a look at the second half highlights and do all that. But first, uh, we'll return and take a look at more of our show following these messages and a word from the University of Florida. Here's a look at some other activities at the University of Florida. Lou Gillette is up to his elbows in alligators, literally. Gillette is a zoology professor at the University of Florida and has studied alligators for five years. In that time, Gillette has seen thousands of baby gators hatch, and in recent years, by using a magnetic resonance imager, Gillette has been able to track the development of alligator embryos almost from conception. It always amazes me that embryonic development takes place even once, um, the complexity of it, and MRI is allowing us to just look at that complexity in a different way. The MRI machine allows researchers to examine the inside of an alligator egg without killing the embryo. Three years ago, Gillette was looking for a way to accomplish that, and Tom Marisi with the radiology and physics departments was looking for different things to examine with the MRI. Here was a man that had an incredible technique searching for questions to apply them to, and I had questions in search of a technique. And uh, it was, a, if you will, a beautiful marriage. Making a world of difference. The University of Florida. Well, a pretty comfortable halftime lead, Steve, 26 to 7. What goes on in the locker room with a lead like this? Obviously, there was not a lot of correcting mistakes mm -hmm. or let's try these plays or this defense and so forth, Mick. Uh, a lot of times, those halftime experiences are overrated. Uh, basically, the players come in and try to relax, cool down a little bit, uh, drink some Gatorade, and get ready for the second half. As coaches, uh, we really just try to emphasize, let's keep playing hard the entire game. Keep playing with maximum effort, and uh, that's what our players did. And again, that was probably the part of the game we were most proud is the effort the team displayed. All right, let's take a look then at the third quarter highlights. You remember the Gators won the toss and took the ball to start the game, so to begin the third quarter, It'll be the uh, visiting club, Oklahoma State, with the football as we take a look at the highlights here. And they start out right away, giving it to Hudson. Right, Oklahoma State has the ball first here in the uh, start of the second half. And again, swarming defense there. Harvey Thomas, P. Bartley, Brad Culpepper had an excellent game. There's Richard Fain in on the tackle. Godfrey Miles in there. And... Colton Miles went for the fake there. I thought the quarterback had it myself for a minute, uh, Mick. They try a real long field goal, and Harvey Thomas blocks it. And we get excellent field position right here. So it's time to try to throw one deep. We thought this play would have a good chance to score if they were in the right defense. And, and we, we caught them in the right defense. Coming up right here, here's Shane going back, a little draw fake. And we got Trey Everett going deep over the middle. And Shane put the ball right on the money, and Trey gets his first touchdown pass as a Gator. Well, he did throw it nicely, and we've got a, another look at that play, too, because it was just precision and uh, nicely done for both of those fellas. Certainly was, Mick. 
I know a lot of people have heard me talk about Trey Everett uh, mm -hmm. since spring practice. Uh, he has really come on and has a chance to be a really uh, big-time receiver for us. And Shane put the ball right exactly where he was supposed to. And as you see, the hands and speed and timing uh, that Trey possesses. So it was a big play for us there. Okay, I think Jimmy Spencer blocks this punt. Here comes Jimmy around, right? And uh, again, excellent field position for our offense here. You know, earlier Jimmy came in and just about got one earlier, and then the second time he did get one. Is that something that was uh, seen later on, that, hey, maybe we can block Blanchard? I think so. Uh, Coach Bob Sanders handles our punt return, punt block, and felt like Jimmy had a chance to get one. Uh, their punter, as you can see, was not real fast getting the punt off, so Jimmy's got tremendous quickness coming off the corner there. So the Gators get the ball right back, and uh, they go right to work, and here's uh, Shane Matthews again for you. Yeah, as you can see, uh, got hung up downfield a little bit, so Shane has the presence of mind to throw underneath mm -hmm. to Dexter McNabb. Dexter had a fine game. Willie McClendon uh, starts doing some running right here. This is uh, Willie's following, is blocking well. Gets down to about the three-yard line. And on the sweep play here, Kirk Kirkpatrick, Mark White, fine blocks. Jim Watson there. Yeah. One of our backup guards in there. Looked like he was blocking two guys for <laughs> Willie. And Willie goes in standing up. So the ball game then moves to the fourth quarter with the Gators just solidly in command and a lot of guys seeing action. Here's Kyle Morris in the game, as is Eric Red. Eric Red is an extremely strong runner, Mick. Uh, he's tough to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. And, and as you can see, he broke a lot of tackles yesterday. And uh, Coach Carl Franks has an excellent group of running backs there. And the Gators have uh, picked up yards, uh, as we mentioned, through the air and on the ground and 567 total yards in all. And Here's Arden. Arden, Arden kicking another field goal. Uh, our special team play was close to perfect yesterday. Hopefully we can continue doing that. Here's Darren Mickle. Uh, again, Coach Bob Sanders, defensive end coach, he has those guys uh, sort of tail off when they see that screen pass coming. And uh, Darren, his first game, freshman, uh, scores a touchdown. So he was at the right place at the right time. Here, here it is again. We said on the radio that uh, he looked like he wanted to be playing tight end or something. I can catch the ball, Coach. <laughs> I tell you what, I like the attitude of our defensive team, uh, Mick. They want to score some points. And uh, a lot of times you just knock that down and everybody is happy. But uh, if you can intercept and go score, uh, that's what we want to do. And that's, that's the attitude our team has. There's Coach Jim Bates on the sideline. A great effort by that Gator defense. As we mentioned, six sacks uh, yesterday by the Gator defense, including right. uh, one here by Culpepper. Here's Brad Culpepper coming through. So it was a big day, uh, Coach. As we mentioned, the record crowd of 75,000-plus, and uh, the Gators uh, go on to win that game by a score of 50-7. to We'll come back and hear from some of the Gator players and take a look ahead for the Alabama game. All that coming up when we continue in just a moment on Florida Football Highlights. Well, as we mentioned, a big day for the Gator offensive team yesterday with 567 yards of total offense. Kirk Kirkpatrick had a big day, so did Trey Everett, Glenn Neely, the offensive line, Shane Matthews. Let's go into the locker room now and hear some comments from the offensive team. Shane's first start, and it's probably real, you know, first real action. He was composed, and he threw the ball really well, and he you know, threw for over 300 yards, so what can you say? He had a great day. I think the first completion what settled me down. That got my confidence level really high, and... You know, I think taking the ball down that quick just boosted our whole offense uh, confidence. I was just so excited that, that the play was called to me and when, when Shane made that perfect throw, I, I had to catch it. We felt that, uh, you know, that they weren't going to run any stunts or try to blitz so much that they didn't know what to expect and we knew that we had to pick up whatever they had. We'd worked all week long on things that they could do and things that they have done in the past and we picked everything up that they could possibly do. 
Not as impressive as the offense was the defense, Steve, also not to be denied. They had 238 yards allowed all that Oklahoma State got in the game and only the one touchdown. Great defensive play. Let's hear now from Huey Richardson and Godfrey Miles from the Gator locker room. Basically, what happened was Brad did an excellent job um, clearing his man out. Without Brad, they wouldn't have come through simply because uh, we, we saw an offensive line and how it would, what the scheme was. And Brad, we called a quick game. He did the, the best job I've seen someone do in a situation like that. Center turned away, and my job was easy. All I had to do was run around and go hit the quarterback. The coaches did a great job in game planning um, Oklahoma State Cowboys, and we just went out there and tried to execute. Steve, I know it had to be a happy group of players in the locker room after that game yesterday. Well, it was, Mick, but I think we're a mature enough team to realize that uh, we were a lot better than Oklahoma mm -hmm. State, and and we, we should have beaten them pretty good. Uh, I didn't know it would be that big a score, uh, but really, if we're going to be a, a fine team this year and have an excellent season, we've really got to get ready to play Alabama this week. Uh, it was a good win yesterday, and but our conference season is starting this week, and uh, this will be the real big test for us. Okay, Alabama, of course, coming in uh, after an upset defeat to Southern Miss, 27-24. A couple of players right off the top offensively that have to concern the Gator defense. That's the quarterback, Gary Hollingsworth and Saran Stacy. Well, Hollingsworth is the all-conference uh, quarterback, uh, and he was the preseason pick also. So uh, he's a fine passer, and certainly we've got to control him. Uh, their tailback, Stacy, is uh, probably their biggest threat, and I'm sure they will try to maybe play ball control and, and give it to him a lot also. Steve, uh, best of luck this week and uh, next week against the Alabama team. Thank you, Mick. That's the Florida Football Highlight Show with Steve Spurrier. Thanks so much for watching. This is Mick Hubert saying so long, everybody. Promotional consideration has been given by Residents Inn, the Gators' second home. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. I'd like to thank all of our wonderful sponsors that have made this show possible. Dairy Farmers Incorporated, First Union, Golden Flake, Scotty, and Great Southern Wood. I hope you'll join us the next time on Florida Football Highlights.